Their very name is menacing, and with good reason. Fire ants are an aggressive invasive species of ant that can seriously injure or even kill animals and people. They swarm their victims very quickly, and their venom is powerful enough to produce a life-threatening reaction. They've been in Virginia since 1989 in the Hampton Roads area and have been slowly spreading west. In 2022, the state fire ant quarantine area was expanded. They're here, they're here to stay. Bruce Phillips has firsthand experience with fire ants at his farm in Southampton County. Like many farmers in that part of the state, he grows cotton, soybeans, and peanuts. He says fire ants are sometimes easy to miss. You may step in one of the, on one of these mounds and not even recognize it. And that's when you're gonna have a problem because once they get on you, it's really, they're biting you, stinging you. Phillips has learned to look for fire ants in certain places on the farm where the insects like to congregate. They're at fence posts, around light poles, in the horse pasture, uh, and down around my grain bins. The fire ants love to dig a, right along the edge of a slab for a grain bin. All of Phillips' trucks have insecticide that will kill fire ants whenever he sees a mound. Even so, in the war between humans and fire ants, the fire ants are winning. There are now uh, approximately 15 localities where fire ants are confirmed positive and that are, are covered under the quarantine. So uh, that goes all the way west to uh, Halifax County is the farthest west that we have a quarantine. Now we are also finding them outside the quarantine and that really speaks to their success as an invasive species because we're treating them, we're tracking them, we're surveying for them, but they are continuing to expand their range. And previously their range was known to kind of not exceed the Richmond area. However, with climate change, you've had a lot of weather incidents like hurricanes and flooding. They are being able to spread more northward and also more westward than we were previously expecting. David Janino with the Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services says, his agency has taken the lead in working with landowners to treat and hopefully slow the spread of fire ants. One of their best tools is a quarantine. That includes anything like logs, mulch, soil, nursery stock, those, those particular articles among a, a variety of others. If they're in association with an import fire ant mound or eggs, they can easily be picked up, moved, and a new population can be established. So the quarantine really works with businesses and it kind of says, hey, if you're moving these products, they have to be either inspected and found free, or you have to treat for fire ants, or you have to be taking mitigating steps to ensure that your truck or your vehicle is either looked at, dirt is removed, and, and treatments are taken to, to kill any sort of life stages that are found. Janino says the same goes for campers and regular citizens who travel from fire ant areas to other parts of the state. No moving firewood or other products from a quarantine area where fire ants can hitch a ride. In fact, fire ant mounds have been found in Richmond and elsewhere at kayak launches and parking lots used by outdoor enthusiasts. Once a fire ant mound has been established, it can take months of special treatment to eliminate them. You can go out and you could spray a can of Raid, which would be off-label. You could, you know, spray other types of pesticides, but unless you kill that whole mound, you really will have no chance at eradicating that colony and that population. So what we use as a treatment strategy is what's called a baited fire ant pesticide that you apply to and around the mound. And what they do is they see that food source, which is laced with pesticides, um, and it's approved for fire ants with an EPA label. They will take that back to the colony and stop, start feeding it to the colony. And if we are able to get that in fast enough and at the right quantities, then we can have control of that mound and you can actually reduce and kill that entire population. But Janino says fire ants are very smart and can quickly adapt if the colony is threatened. So repeated applications are often needed. A fire ant colony is bad enough for homeowners. What's the risk to farmers and rural residents? It can range from delays to shipping crops, to injuries to cattle and workers, to a loss of value for their farmland. We actually have documented cases of imported fire ants attacking either a cattle, like young cattle, and just based on the amount of swarming and stinging that happens, um, causes one, an anaphylactic response in a young cattle, and it can either succumb to that, or with the sting it creates this pustule. And these pustules create open wounds, and when open wounds aren't treated, and if a farmer or an individual doesn't know that there might be a fire ant mound in their field and the cattle got into it, 
then you've got open sores. Those can get infected, and there is a documented case of a young cattle and young goats also succumbing to infections based on um, those pustules and those sores from the fire ants. Janino says the good news is that some federal and state funding is now available to help his department deal with fire ant colonies earlier than before. For the first time, they're able to try to eradicate mounds outside the quarantine area. And as word of the problem spreads, farmers and rural business associations are stepping up to respect the quarantine and report fire ants right away. If you suspect fire ants inside the quarantine area, contact your local cooperative extension agent to help confirm that. If you are outside of the quarantine area and you do see what looks like a suspect mound, we want to know about it here at VDAX. So what I would recommend is that if you find a fire ant mound or a suspect fire ant mound, take a picture of it, send that information along with the location of that fire ant mound to report a pest at vdax.virginia.gov and then we'll have someone look at the picture and then send out a plant protection inspector to try and analyze that mound, take a sample and identify it if it is fire ants. Reporting from Richmond, Virginia, I'm Ricky Gibson.